Hey yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Jesse Keegan and your girl Fanny Longo and we are Fanny, Fanny and Jesse. Jesse. So right about now we're gonna do another reaction video but before we get into the reaction guys I want to say thank you so much for getting us to 20,000 subscribers. You guys are super amazing man. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. What do you think man? 20,000 subscribers. Honestly grateful. Yeah, thank you so much. Although we haven't been so active on the uh, on the reaction part of it but anyways, thank you so much. We're gonna we promise you guys we're gonna drop every video like every day you're gonna have like five four videos every day or something like that you're promising too much <laughs> yeah, that's, me. that's a little promises right there yeah? how do you feel about the twenty thousand subscribers the twenty thousand subscribers feels like someone has to pinch me you know so that i feel like like to come back to reality or something mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's, it's such an amazing thing feeling. to have you know feeling yeah so it's a good feeling actually but anyway, yeah, thank you so much for the people who have been subscribing. You guys are really amazing. For the people who are new here, we are finding Jesse. We do reaction videos. We do any kind of reaction. Just let us know in the comment section below and we're going to do it for you. And I mean, we're here to entertain you guys, to educate ourselves, also educate you. I mean, there's so many things we need to know and understand at the same time. You know, we pick the best and also you guys give us the best. So you guys can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and where else? Yeah, Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok also, we're there. Uh, where else? Um, so if you're too shy to suggest YouTube something also. here on YouTube, you can actually DM us directly on yeah. these other platforms. Just slide on our DMs. But just feel free to say hi, we'll say hi back. We're right there, yeah, we we'll say hi to... Uh, so many people actually say hi to us on, on Instagram. You yeah. know, a lot of people. On Instagram page, Everything is on the description below. You just check out, uh, check out our. There's a link there. Just click on it. You see us on Instagram. It's funny and Jesse. So what's your excuse for being away this time around? For us to be. Like... Excuse? Uh, I don't like giving out excuse, but the only thing I can say is that we were busy. We were beyond yeah, busy. We were beyond busy. You know. Uh, bear with us. We want to be able to give you the best as you can. But anyway, this is what we can get for you guys. I hope you really accept us the way we are. And we're going to give you even more. So, without any further ado, today we're going to do, a, do another reaction video. This one right here was suggested by somebody on our comment section. And he said it just, he suggested that we should go react to Gavin, a Christian, accepts Islam after his six doubts are cleared by doctors. Okay, Nike. So, without any further ado, guys, let's get it. Okay, good evening, everybody. My name is Kevin, and I'm a concierge. Uh, today I'm coming here because I have six doubts, which I believe if I get the right answer, I'm ready to convert and accept to Islam. Uh, to start with, on my first question is that, uh, how do I know that Islam is the right way to worship, and uh, I will follow that question with the second question, which goes like, how do I know that the message I'm conveying is going to God, okay? And my third question, since Dr. Zaki, I've been listening to you before, you have said before and you have preached that uh, there's no way you can go to heaven without strictly abiding to the commandments that were given to Moses. In the present world and challenges with the media, with everything that comes along to our life in our present day, how do we um, abide to this law? And does God forgive you if you repeatedly make mistakes and repent? Brother wants to give in two parts. <laughs> he wants to ask six questions. The first three questions, brother asked, that how do I know in Islam the worship is correct? It can be understood as how we worship in Islam, is that correct? Or it can mean that is Islam the correct religion? What do you mean? Do you want to know the, that the way you worship in Islam, is it the right way or? Is Islam the correct religion of worship? The first question the brother asked, he wants to know, how will he come to know that is Islam the correct religion we should follow. And the second part that is similar, that how will you come to know that Islam is the truth? Exactly. 
And the third, that he said, at the seven of my speech, that J.S. Kess, peace be upon him, said, that if you want to enter Jannah, you should keep all the commandments and follow all the laws mentioned in the Old Testament. How in this age can we follow all the laws of the Old Testament? I will try and club the first two questions together. That how do you know that Islam is the correct religion to worship? And how do you know that Islam is the truth? Islam comes from the word salam, which means peace. It is also derived from the Arabic word film, which means to submit your will to God. Islam means peace acquired by submitting your will to Almighty God. And for any book to claim that it is a message from God, for any religion to prove that it is from Almighty God, this revelation, this book, this religion should stand the test of time. Previously, it was the age of miracles. And the glorious Quran is the miracle of miracles. Later on came the age of literature and poetry. Muslim and non-Muslim Arabic scholars alike, they claim the glorious Quran to be the best Arabic literature available on the face of the earth. But today, if a religious book says in a very poetic fashion, the world is flat, will a model man believe? But naturally no, because today is the age of science and technology. So if we put this test of science and technology to all the religious scriptures that we have today of the different religions of the world, all of them fail the test except the Quran. And I've given a lecture on the topic Quran and modern science, compatible or incompatible. Time does not permit me to give a full lecture in this question answer session. But I'd like to mention that Albert Einstein said, the famous physicist, and the Nobel Prize winner, that science without religion is lame, and religion without science is blind. Let me remind you, the glorious Quran is not a book of science, S-C-I-E-N-C-E, -E, but it's a book of signs, S-I-G-N-S. -S. And there are more than 6,000 signs, more than 6,000 ayats in the glorious Quran, out of which more than 1,000 speak about science. Now, if you compare the scientific facts that we have come to know, we find that what science has discovered recently, maybe 50 years back, 100 years back, 200 years back, 400 years back, the glorious Quran has mentioned 1400 years ago. The Quran speaks about the creation of the universe in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30. What the scientists discovered recently about the Big Bang. What they discovered 50 years back is mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago. We came to know that the earth is spherical in 1577 when Sir Francis Drake sailed around the earth. The Quran says in Surah Naziat, chapter number 79, verse number 30, that we have made the earth egg shaped, referring to the egg of an ostrich, and we know the egg of an ostrich is geospherical in shape. We previously thought that the light of the moon was its own light. Recently, we came to know 100 years back, 200 years back, 300 years back, that the light of the moon is reflected light, not its own light. This is mentioned in the Quran 14 years ago in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 61. So who could have mentioned all these facts in the Quran which we came to know recently? Previously, when I was in school, I had learned that the sun revolves but does not rotate about its own axis. Quran mentions in Surah Ambiya, chapter 21, verse number 33, that the sun, besides revolving, it also rotates about its axis. Today, science has come to know that besides the sun revolving, it even rotates about its axis, which is mentioned in the Quran 14 years ago. In this way, the Quran speaks about botany, about biology, about zoology, about embryology, about genetics, all which we came to know recently in science, 50 years back, 100 years back, 300 years back, 500 years back. So if we put this test of science today to all the religious scriptures, the only religious scripture that passes this test is the glorious Quran. Today, science hasn't advanced so much that it knows everything. So I tell the people that if you analyze the Quran, we come to know approximately 80% what the Quran speaks about science, today science has confirmed it is 100% correct. 
there may be about 20% which is ambiguous, neither right, neither wrong. So my logic says when 80% is 100% correct, the balance 20% inshallah will also be correct. So it is a logical belief. There is not a single verse in the Quran which has been disproved by scientific fact. There may be hypotheses which may not agree with the Quran, but there is not a single verse in the Quran which is disproved by any scientific fact. So based on this, if we put this test to any scripture, the only religion, the only scripture that passes this test is Islam and Quran. I started the question answer session by quoting a verse of the Quran from Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 81, which says, وَقُلْ جَعَلْ حَقْ وَزَاقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَوْكَ Say that truth has arrived and falsehood perishes. For falsehood, it's by its nature bound to perish. So if you put this test, the only religion that passes the test, the only truthful religion which is not corrupted, that's the reason William Moore said, that the only religious scripture, he said 200 years back, being a critic of Islam, the only religious scripture that has not been altered and has maintained its pure form for 1200 years, it is the glorious Quran. So based on these facts, the only religion we can think and can understand and can believe it is truthful and correct, it is the Quran. As far as the third question is concerned, that I had mentioned in my speech, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said that you have to follow the commandments in the Old Testament. I was quoting the verse of the Bible, Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 to 20, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, in no way shall you enter the kingdom of heaven. So if you have to be a good Christian at the time of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, if you want to enter paradise, you have to follow all the commandments of the Old Testament. You cannot break a single jot or a tittle. If you do that, you shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. So based on this verse of the Bible of Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17 to 20, you have to follow each and every law of the Old Testament. And your question was very good and very logical. How can we in this age follow everything of the Old Testament which is difficult, I agree with you. That's the reason Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, also said in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. He said, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself, all that year shall he speak. He shall glorify me. Your prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, is prophesying the coming of the last and final messenger, last and final prophet, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. That when he will come, he will guide you unto all truth. That means Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, knew that everything what is mentioned in the Bible cannot be followed later on, maybe a few centuries later. That's the reason he said that he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth, talking about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So at that time, maybe it was possible to follow the rules and regulations mentioned in the Old Testament and the New Testament. But Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, in future, when the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, comes, you should follow him. So if you have to be a good Christian today, besides believing in one God, you should also believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Hope that answers the question, brother. The other question is coming from a Christian background with a Christian family. How will I uh, adapt or connect to my family if I convert to Islam and having two different faiths in the same compound? Brother asked the question that if I convert to Islam, how will I connect with my family having two different faiths? Brother, you know there's something like the Old Testament and something like the New Testament. Even though you are a Christian, you can follow the laws of the Old Testament after the New Testament has come. If there is something like the Old Testament and New Testament, there is also something like the Last Testament. The glorious Quran is the Last Testament of Almighty God. And in this glorious Quran, not a single prophet which is mentioned in the Bible has been derogated. 
in Islam, you have to believe in all the prophets that came earlier. And there are no less than 25 prophets which are mentioned in the Quran. And all of them, except for Prophet Muhammad and a couple of them, they are mentioned in the Bible. So, we have to respect all the prophets of Almighty God. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that Almighty God has sent 124,000 messengers on the face of the earth. So, if you become a Muslim, you do not have to disrespect any of the prophets mentioned in the Bible. In fact, you will have to tell them, I am following 100% what Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said. What the other Christians are doing, they may be following 80%, maybe 90%, maybe 50%. You should tell them that Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14 says, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. So I am following Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, much better than the other so-called Christians. So if you become a Muslim, you will be a better Christian than the Christian themselves. Hope that answers the question, brother. Yes. What's the fifth question? <laughs> I just ran out of questions now. <laughs> Fine, so all your questions answered. Yes, it has. Thank you. So now, are you convinced about the religion of Islam? I'm convinced about the uh, religion of Islam and I'm ready to accept Islam. Do you believe that there is one God? I'm sorry? Do you believe that there is one God? I believe there is one God. Do you believe Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is God? I believe Jesus Christ was the messenger of God. Mashallah. Do you believe, do you believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final messenger? I believe Prophet Muhammad was the last and final Mashallah. Brother, is anyone, is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? I'm ready to accept. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? Nobody is forcing me. Are it's my decision. I make it will? from myself. Out yes. of your free will? Out of your own conviction? Out of my own heart. Because forcing anyone into Islam is prohibited in our religion and it is prohibited even by laws of most of the countries in the world. So you're doing it out of your free will, inshallah. I'm doing it out of free will. I will say it in Arabic and inshallah you can repeat it. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Warafuluhu. Waraful. I bear witness. I bear witness. I bear witness. I bear witness that that there is no God. There is no God but Allah. But Allah and and Muhammad and Muhammad is is the messenger. The messenger and servant of Allah and servant of Allah. Mashallah, you have become Muslim, Thank and I pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that He guides you and He helps you to guide your family to come to the religion of peace. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the best in this world as well as in the next life. What do you have to say about the, the whole thing? Uh, it's always scratching my eye. It's always a good thing to see. I always say that. But what's amazing is how everyone's path is different and interesting mm. to actually um, watch. Uh, this man's questions were based on perhaps whatever he was feeling and whatever he was leaning towards. Do you understand? But if it was me in front of uh, Dr. Zaki Naik, I would have my own questions that would be speaking to me. Like this would be my convincing factor once these questions are asked. Just like if you go there as well, you're going to have your own questions. Yeah. Um, I feel like as long as he's satisfied with the way the answers were given right, sure. um, and he's accepted the religion, then good for him. Yeah, I mean... It's always good to see someone follow something they've been wanting because it's like he's been wanting it because he didn't... Um, someone else would have... What I'm trying to say is someone else who's not ready to um, accept the religion would turn this into something of a going back and forth situation, you understand? Yeah. So I feel like he was ready there mentally. He just needed the answers to these questions. Yeah, very true. What do you think? 
Um, you know, just like when you're searching for one answer and then you finally have it, you get it. So already you're convinced that uh, this is the best place to be in. Do you understand? So he came with answers. So, sorry, questions. he came with questions and then um, he was answered accordingly. And I think he was really, really contented with the answers because he said, if you answer these questions, I'll be willing to. Uh, to become a Muslim, yeah. you know, and Dr. Zakinek did a really good job, actually. I mean, the thing is, we all know that he's, uh, he's, he's, he's really passionate about the entire, you know, um, Islamic religion, and then he's really dedicated enough. He understands the Quran in and out, also the Bible at the same time. He can just, like, talk to you and make you uh, not only believe, but just... Um, make you fall in love with the religion. You understand? Mm. Just by how charismatic he is, the stature he, uh, he possesses and on the stage and all those kinds of things. I mean, such an amazing time to be alive, to actually see people converting from different religions to another. And again, we are not saying that um, uh, Christianity is a, is a, is a, is a no-go type of a religion. No, I mean, uh, the thing is, it's it's a it's more like a choice. What do you wanna be? If you find here is where you think there's enough peace. If you find that Islam, you didn't get more answers. You go to Christianity, you find more answers. Then sometimes it's not about answers. It's about where you feel like you belong. Yeah, exactly belong. But again, I think it's even more like. Like the guy came with questions and then he found answers in there, you understand? Mm. I mean, sort of, some of it, I mean... You, yeah, I understand you, what, what you're yeah. saying, but that's why I personally say, according to what I was getting from this, it's like he's already there, do you understand? Yeah. Like, this is for me, I just want answers to this. Like, he had already um, anticipated it, you know? The anticipation was already there. So he just came in to just confirm, <laughs> you understand? Like just well, that little push, yeah, yeah, that just one little, last push. Yeah, exactly. You know. Also, uh, people shouldn't be scared to coexist with other religions. Yeah, because y you could tell you, the last question was like, so now that I'm a Muslim and my family is Christian, uh, I mean uh, Christian, how will I be able to cope with them? Yeah. yeah At so, the end of the day, I feel like they should actually learn from each other. Yeah, I mean, you don't you know, have to practice the other religion, but just respect it. Yes, let's teach respect each other. Respect how let's they respect. do their things, exactly. but you should respect how you do your things now that you become changed religions. So yeah, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Exactly, and I feel it's a it's a good time for us to just understand that we're in the same path. Do you understand? We're in the same path. It's only just uh uh just religion that is kind of separating us but again when you look at where we are heading to we have one common interest and that is God so let's not be in a position where we don't want to speak to one another because you're from a different religion because you're from a different uh, ethnicity and all those kind of stuff let's, let's come together let's help each other if you see a Christian brother having issues or problems try to help him out if you see a Muslim brother having problems, try to help him out. I mean, that way, even uh, God is going to bless you even more. Yeah, yes, so. so. Uh, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you in our next reaction video. And this is.